What's good? It's your boy, Fanon. If I had asked you, would it be possible that an unknown 154-pound boxer from Washington, D.C. fought a boring Cuban fighter at almost 1 o'clock in the morning and that they would outperform the most popular heavyweight champion, the face of boxing all over the world, fighting for a unification of a major championship belt. Would you think that that would be possible? (laughs) What is the likelihood that the biggest name in the world of boxing could be outperformed in the United States by a unknown 154-pound kid from Washington, D.C., and a boring Cuban fighting at 1 o'clock in the morning. You would say that was impossible, but it's possible, and that is exactly what happened. When Jared Hurd and Is Landy Lara fight card that when they fought at one o'clock in the morning, Eastern standard time in the United States outperformed the airing of Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker for the WBA, the IBF, the WBO in the IBO heavyweight championships of the world. Now, before I go into the details to explain why that is, let me ask you to please subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you can participate in the live streams that we have. Uh, we'll be discussing this and several other other topics. We really we have a lot of very mature and knowledgeable boxing fans. So I hope that in the live stream. So I hope that you'll accept my invitation to attend. Oh, and the best way to do that is to subscribe and hit the bell icon. So let me go through the article, and this is before we go into these comparisons. I want to point out a couple things that we are comparing two fights on the same network that both happened at times that which were out of out of prime time and one outperforming the other. In an article by Keith Eiding, heard Laura drew higher ratings for Showtime than Joshua Parker. Garrett Hurd and Islandi Lara didn't start fighting until 12.43 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday night. They, that didn't stop them from producing higher ratings than the heavyweight title unification fight Showtime televised the previous Saturday. Nielsen Media Research Ratings released Tuesday revealed Viewership of Heard Lara, the main event for Showtime's triple header in Las Vegas, peaked at 521,000. The average audience for Heard Lara was 490,000. Unbeaten British superstar Anthony Joshua's unanimous decision win over Joseph Parker was watched by a peak audience of 379,000 with an average of 400, 346,000, March 31st. The heavyweight championship unification began at 5.51 p.m. Eastern time, long before prime time, while airing that early in the United States created a ratings disadvantage for the, for the uh, Joshua Parker bout, heard Lara began unusually late for East Coast viewers. The same day replay of Joshua Parker peaked at 483,000 and averaged 430,000. Showtime's same day replay of Cardiff we- uh, from Cardiff, Wales began at 10 p.m. Eastern. I don't think that there is too much left to go through in this article other than to point out clearly that a fight that started after midnight almost one o'clock in the morning peaked at 520,000 
521,000. And the replay, which was in prime time, peaked at 483,000. That, my friends, is a fair comparison. Between Anthony Joshua, Joseph Parker, in a heavyweight unification bout against Laura, Israelandi Laura, who's best known for putting people to sleep watching his fights, for the definitely for the Goshaw fight, and Jarrett Hurd, who is you could it might if you walk outside your house, it might in the United States, it might take you a week to find somebody who knows who he is. If you don't live in Washington, D.C. How could this be? We're not talking about Deontay Wilder and doing some near, a numbers comparison with the 1.2 million that Deontay Wilder did during prime time, which, by the way, outperformed Anthony Joshua in the United States with all of the airings of the fight between Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker. All of them. The one in the afternoon, plus the replay in the evening, the primetime replay, plus the Saturday morning replay, all three of them aver- uh, totaled up to 883000 And Deontay Wilder peaked at 1.2 for just one of them. So the question remains, how can a guy who nobody, hardly anybody knows outside of the most dedicated and hardcore boxing fans in America, Jared Hurd, and Islandy Laura, who is by far one of the hardest boxers in, in all of boxing to watch usually, though I have to say in this particular fight, because of the style of fight, it was very, very, very exciting. How could they outperform the biggest superstar in all of the world, in the entire world of boxing? My answer is that Anthony Joshua is not the biggest superstar in all of boxing. Because if he is, there's no way that he would have gotten better rankings, ratings in the biggest boxing, the biggest boxing environment in the world, which is the United States. No way he would have been outperformed by Jarrett Hurd in his Israel Landy Laura. Now we've had these debates about what a flop is. Is that a flop? I said that the ratings were decent. That was my initial feeling. You know, they're decent. They're nothing to be, you know, they're nothing to write home about, but they're decent. That was my first thought because I said, you know, He's not very well known in the United States, and it was in the afternoon, but, you know, so maybe it was because it was in the afternoon, but no, no, not when you can get 521,000 to watch Is Landy Lara and Jarrett Hurd. These are two fighters, like I said, that if you wanted to... if you walked outside your door in the, and you're in Chicago, Illinois, and you walk outside of your house and you walk around, you walk around the streets for a half hour, you will not find one per, you will not find two people that know who Jared Hurd is. So what does this mean about Anthony Joshua? Anthony Joshua is not well known and he's not very popular at all in the United States of America. At all which gives credence to an argument that an other channel had made, shout out to Blood Boxing, that who really is the bigger, who is more known globally? Is it Anthony Joshua or is it Deontay Wilder? If everybody who knows Deont- Anthony Joshua in the, in the UK knows who Deontay Wilder is, they seem to be equally well known in the UK which has about 65 million people. Equally well-known. Now, they might like Anthony Joshua better than they like Deontay Wilder, but they're equally known, which shows itself in the estimates of the fight that they are proposing to have with one another. 
$100 million estimate. Many industry, uh, industry experts estimate that the fight would be between 80 million and 100 million and that many of them think that it could be more. Where would that number come from? That number would come from roughly the $53 million. Now that is already converted from pounds to dollars that Anthony Joshua could get out of the UK that he got from fighting, fighting Vladimir Klitschko in the UK, in Wembley Stadium, doing 100, between 100 and 100, I mean, between a million and 1.5 million pay-per-views. That generated after you train after you train uh change it, convert it from pounds to dollars, it was estimated that that was 53 million US dollars. Then you add to it the component of US pay-per-view and have it at $60, $70 and sell half a million pay-per-views at 70 uh at $70. That gets you somewhere right around $100 million for the total of the fight. But where would the extra money come from? It would come from the United States of America. Who is bringing the crowd in the United States of America? It's Deontay Wilder. Because he's the most popular in the most important place. Like someone else had said, Joseph Parker, I'm quite sure, is very, very popular in Samoa and in New Zealand. The problem is that there's not many people that are going to be buying the fights in Samoa and New Zealand. Deontay Wilder is from a country of 365 million potential buyers. And he's doing roughly Four times the viewership of Anthony Joshua in the United States. So, while we go through this negotiation and all these talks about how Deontay Wilder doesn't have any leverage and how Anthony Joshua is the greatest superstar in the world, you know, maybe it's time to take a step back from that and really analyze and separate fact from fiction. Is he the number one guy in the UK? Certainly he is. He's the number one guy in the UK. The number one heavyweight in the United States is Deontay Wilder. And Deontay Wilder, if he fights Anthony Joshua on pay-per-view in the United States, even if it's aired in the UK, and it does does 500,000 buys, just 500,000. I'm not talking... I'm not talking pay-per-view Canelo numbers versus Gennady Golovkin numbers. You know, I'm not talking Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Canelo numbers or Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Conor McGregor numbers. I'm not talking those type of numbers. I'm talking Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. (laughs) Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. versus uh, Sergio Martinez numbers. That fight's $100 million. It is what it is, people. It is what it is. But what has definitely been shown is that Anthony Joshua's popularity is not all that is cracked up to be. And something else that I've also found out, when I was trying to figure out what the pay-per-view numbers are with Sky Sports, where people are saying that Sky Sports, you know, Anthony Joshua broke broke these pay-per-view records for Sky Sports. Sky Sports never releases their official pay-per-view numbers. You can't find them. It's not like a it's not like the situation where you can go to Showtime and you can find out the numbers that the guy actually did. Because Showtime is publicly traded in the United States, Showtime has to release those numbers because if you own Showtime, if you own shop stock in CBS, then you're an owner of Showtime and therefore it is their responsibility to give you accurate numbers and let you know the what the performance on your investment is. That's not the case with Sky Sports or at least if Sky I'm sure Sky Sports is publicly traded. However, Sky Sports is not releasing their numbers. So we really don't know what type of money Anthony Joshua is uh drew in pay-per-view in uh, in the UK. And seeing as 
you can catch Eddie Hearn lying about just about anything. More than likely, whatever number they say that he's that he's drawn, you can cut that by you can cut that by I'd say conservatively cut it by 10 percent to 20 percent just because it's a liar tax. <laughs> you know, but that's my opinion. That's my opinion is the liar tax. You know, the, the promoter, the you know, the, the Bob Aram saying that Lomachenko is the greatest fighter since Muhammad Ali right at 10 and one. That's what promoters do. They're meant to give you a sense of grandeur, right? Give you a sense of, you know, make somebody appear as if they're larger than life by exaggerating numbers, exaggerating, uh, exaggerating accomplishments by putting in, putting in the fighter with mat with matches that they know can look somewhat uh, competitive, but uh, their matchmakers know pretty full well that the, that their fighter is going to win. You know, all those things that promoters do. Now, some people say it's a job as a promoter. The job of a promoter is to lie. I disagree with that. A job of a promoter is to make you believe and fall in love with a fighter or to want or to hate another fighter. The result being that you want to actually see the fight. A job of a promoter is to promote a fight. That's what it should be. But and but to lie, that's not their job. Not to not to lie, not to create situations where fights don't happen. That's, you know, that's just flat out ducking. But it is what it is. You know, we'll we'll see. I, personally, I'm now understanding that Anthony Joshua has flopped in the United States and that Anthony Joshua is not popular in the United States. And we can put that myth to that myth to rest. And to know that Deontay Wilder popularity is rising in the U- in the UK and that Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder is more well known in the UK than Anthony Joshua is in the US. You know, man, it's just time for Anthony for Deontay Wilder to cont- continue to try to develop and press this into an advantage. Continue to do what you're doing in the United States. Fight guys, get to 50 and 0, get to 51 and 0, have that celebration for being 51 and 0 while you have this guy over here Waiting and honestly, you know, just waiting to fall off, waiting to fall off. And then hopefully you can get your you can get to the point where the leverage is that he can come over to the United States and then Eddie Hearn be willing to cash him out because that ain't no easy road going over there with this Alex, Alexander Povetkin route that they're trying to take. I'm telling you. Eddie Hearn is playing with fire with Alexander Povetkin. If what they did and what I do believe they did was set up a phony offer to Anthony to Deont- I mean, excuse me to Deontay Wilder where they say we're going to offer you 12 million dollars 12.5 million dollars flat but they won't tell him when the fight happens they won't tell him where the fight happens they won't tell him it's if, if it's the next fight or if it's three fights down the road they won't tell him if there's a rematch clause they're not going to they're not going to they don't come to an agreement about whether what the, the whether they're going to reciprocate the balance the split of the purses in the next fight None of those, in, don't, none of that stuff is in there, and they give them forty-eight hours to respond. Very much sounds like a fake offer. Sounds like a fake offer to me. So, since you know he doesn't want to fight, just continue to grow your name, get to the point where, because I think I'm pretty sure that the next fight with Deontay Wilder is going to do better, should do better than the last one. Because we've got, because he's got a big support growing on in the YouTube boxing community. You have more and more articles being written out about him on a daily basis. He's going out to promoting himself on the Breakfast Club, taking, you know, being on other television shows and building up his profile in the United States where it counts. Because if this fight is going to happen and it's going to be built to you know the size that they wanted personally i just want to see who the best guy is personally i want to see who the best guy is then deontay wilder needs to continue to grow himself in the united states and continue to outperform anthony joshua in the united states because anthony joshua is already his his eddie hearn has already said that his his intention is to come to the united states hopefully against probably against jarrell miller in the barclay center but i've long said this the only reason there's no reason for him to come over and fight Jarrell Miller in the in the uh, in the Barclays Center if those numbers are real, because he would be taking a pay cut. 
You can't tell me that he's there's going to be twenty million dollars worth of revenue in a fight with Jarrell Miller, in with Jarrell Miller and Anthony Joshua in the Barclays Center, because the only the only major revenue that's going to come from it is going to be the pay per view for it in the UK. And what's that going to be? At seventeen million, that's going to be what seventeen million pounds, twenty million pounds. So that's twenty million pounds, and then he's getting twenty million. He's going to have to take a pay cut. So why wouldn't they just continue? Why wouldn't they just bring Jarrell Miller over there and say, "Hey, you know, we'll try to introduce him to American audience by fighting an American." Oh, I forgot. Yeah, he already beat Charles. He already fought two Americans over there in uh, in Great Britain, in Charles Martin and Dominic Brazil. And that didn't get his profile up. So, you know, it is what it is, man. But I just wanted to say that as far as this popularity thing with Anthony Joshua, that pay-per-view, to be outperformed on Showtime by (laughs) Israelandy Lara and and Jared Hurd, (laughs) (laughs) J-Rock, J-Rock and Nathan Nathaniel Gallimore, James DeGale and Truax to get outperformed by them. When you have a a guy that's supposed to be all that they're chalking him up to be the WBA, the WBO, the IBF, the WBA, the the IBF, the WBA and the WBO. (laughs) Come on, man. How can that be? The answer is he's just not as popular as that. They're trying to chalk him up to be, man. There's a lot of hype there, man. And not as much substance as we thought. Peace.